Hey everyone, I'm Cassius and welcome back to the Shakespeare Minute. Today, in honor of Memorial Day, I will be taking a look at my favorite Shakespearean battle. Now, I really, really wish that I could tell you that Philippi was my favorite Shakespearean battle, my screen name being Cassius and all, but I can't. It's great, and there are many contenders for the greatest battle title. I know, uh, Agincourt, Bosworth Field, Dunsinane, Actium, but when it comes down to showing people on two sides fighting it out for their respective causes, nothing comes close to the Battle of Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury. Sure, let's go with that. The Battle of Shrewsbury is the closing act of Henry IV Part I, where Henry IV and Prince Hal put down the Hotspur Rebellion, led by the Percy family that feels slighted by the king they helped install in the first place. There are bold, noble men on both sides, and many of the fights are actually put on stage. Unlike lots of other battles where Shakespeare simply told us about how the battle went, the plot point being about who won, we actually see this unfold before our eyes, and for my money, this battlefield is one of the darkest and most mesmerizing settings that Shakespeare paints in any of his plays. Let's jump right in to the five biggest moments of the Battle of Shrewsbury in chronological order to take a look at why it is the battle for my heart. Moment number one, Sir Walter Blunt versus the Douglas. The Douglas is a Scottish warrior fighting with the rebels, and he goes up against Sir Walter Blunt, a knight who is fighting for the king, and quickly establishes that who are you is a major theme of this fight. The battlefield is a place of rampant deception, where people hide their identities almost compulsively. Asking someone, who are you, is in fact a very intimate thing, and the only thing more intimate is answering it honestly. Well, Blunt lies, saying that he is the king, and the Douglas, a valiant soldier, kills him to try and end the battle. What is thy name, that in this battle thus thou crossest me? What honors dost thou seek upon my head? Know then, my name is Douglas, and I do haunt thee in battle thus, because some tell me thou art a king. They tell thee true. This, of course, leads right into moment number two, Falstaff's speech about honor, a hilarious and subversive tirade about the nature of honor in the face of death. Falstaff firmly believes that men will always dishonor themselves while they live, a cynical viewpoint that is not quite shared by everyone else, though he makes an amusing and engaging case, as always. For Falstaff, honor is for the dead, which makes it highly undesirable. Who are you? Sir Walter Blunt. There's honor for you. I like not such grinning honor as Sir Walter hath. Give me life. Which, if I can save, so. If not, honor comes unlooked for, and there's an end. This way, follow me, man! This moment, by the way, also begins with a who are you moment as Falstaff investigates the identity of the corpse he has found. Moment number three, King Henry IV and Prince Hal fight the Douglas. The Douglas fights with the king at this point, very annoyed that he has killed two men who were dressed like the king and claimed to be the king, but were not the king. And at this point, he is very, very concerned about the identity of his opponent. He does, however, believe that this time he is fighting the king, and, well, he is. Another king! They grow like Hydra's head. But of course, Prince Hal, who had been wounded earlier on, returns to the fray when he sees his father in danger in this fight. Ah! Hold up thy head, vile start of the light, never to hold it up again. The Douglas runs off at this two-on-one, and Hal finally acquits himself as a real prince, and Henry's doubts about his son are eliminated. Well, you know, at least until the rehash, reboot, sequel thing known as Henry IV Part Two. Oh, also, Hal declares his own identity as he bursts into the fray, showing that he, like the Douglas, is fearless about being true to his own identity. It is the Prince of Wales that threatens thee, who never promiseth, but he means to pay. Number four is the big final showdown. The confrontation we've been waiting for the whole play, Prince Hal versus Hotspur. Here is where, who are you, becomes the biggest question in the world. If I mistake not, Thou art Harry Munmer. Thou speaks as if I would deny my name. My name is Harry Percy. Why, then I see a very valiant rebel of the name. 
These two foils and lifelong rivals are determined to fight, so they honestly state their identities and then they get down to it, and it is amazing. Not in this adaptation though, which makes the fight look kind of clunky and silly. Well, come on, there's a new adaptation coming out any day now from the BBC, probably in part to repent for this series from the 70s, so hopefully we can get a better version of this fight. I have pretty high hopes. At any rate, the prince overcomes his more accomplished rival and proves himself worthy as the man who would be king dies before him. Hal shows his respect for his fallen adversary, and we get one of the most touching moments of commemoration for any soldier in Shakespeare, particularly notable because it happens between two enemies, not allies. Fare thee well, great heart. This earth bears thee dead. There's not a lie so stout a gentleman. After this, Hal has nothing more to do but take his place as king. Unfortunately, there's a sequel, which largely capitalizes on moment number five, the last real episode before the play's denouement, which admittedly sets up a really, really lame sequel, is where Falstaff, who pretended to die during the fight, turns out to be alive, and he takes credit for killing Hotspur. So now not only does Hal likely lose his credit for killing his rival, but his substitute father is still alive, meaning that Hal can't really break free from his old reputation as a hard partying, lazy, hopeless future king. Or he could, but he relents and allows Falstaff to take the credit instead of writing him off right here. Gotta leave room for part two, apparently. But in this moment, while it ends in a bit of a letdown, begins in a way that very much maintains the intensity of the battlefield, despite the battle being quite over, and Hal, seeing the old man he thought was dead, again raises that endlessly important question. Who are you? What's up? Whom have we here? Did you not tell me this fat man was dead? I did. I saw him dead, breathless and bleeding on the ground. Art thou alive? Or is it some fantasy that plays upon our eyesight? I prithee speak. We will not trust our eyes without our ears. Thou art not what thou seemst. Of course, this time Falstaff's answer is less the intense honesty of the field and more the powerhouse comedy that we know and love. Uh, no, that's certain. I'm no double man. <laughs> uh, but if I be not Jack Falstaff, then am I a Jack? Well, that's the battle of. Shrewsbury. A place where noble men fought and died for honor, where we see every role from the cynicism of Falstaff to the ambition of Hotspur to the duty of Prince Hal and Sir Walter Blunt filled out with depth and passion. For me, no other Shakespearean battle comes close to showing what exactly is put on the line in these life or death moments. Commoner tonight to King, everyone is in danger and the stakes are incredibly high. There is respect between allies and adversaries, and a rich depiction of so much that is right and wrong with these kinds of altercations. Of course, the context is also amazing. Briefly, the King decides to pardon all of the rebels before the fight if they will stand down, and since the rebel leader that the king chose to tell was too nervous about his own place, the message is never delivered. The men who chose to ignore this overture of mercy are put to death for their treachery when they lose. The mix of deceptive political concerns and the high-flown honor that other characters show shows us that Shakespeare had both a healthy respect and a healthy cynicism for the whole business. And this makes for an instantly compelling battle scene. No one philosophy is correct. Everyone has to come to this with their own. I highly recommend Henry IV Part One for its political story that culminates in the Battle of... Shrewsbury. And this week, I will be digging into some more of that backstory, so stay tuned. As for now, have a great Memorial Day. Till next time, for the Shakespeare Minute, I'm Cassius. Think of the world. Put them down again and watch the miles roll on by.